So good morning, BBC. How you doing? Yeah, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. So this is chapel. This is awesome, man. Awesome. I love it. So some of you are probably thinking, uh, what's the chef doing here? Isn't a chef's place in the kitchen? Yeah? No, no, no. <laughs> so I was in a, a student life meeting, and uh, it's Nell's fault. Yeah, Nell Voorhees brought up, maybe I should come and speak to you, you know? And at first I thought she was egging me on. I did, I did. <laughs> well, you know, I had to scramble after breakfast to get here. I really did. Yeah. Some of you may think, well, he's just up here to ham it up. But I'm not, I'm not, because you see, I don't want to hash it out with Dr. Christensen. He'll be so upset. He will be. So what I'm here to do today is to get you juiced up for the Lord. All right, that's enough, that's enough. Let's go again before our Lord in prayer. Oh, Father in heaven, we just thank you. We thank you so much, Lord, that uh, your wonderful creation, that you uh, created us in your image, that you gave us the opportunity to know you in a deep, personal way. And Lord, we can see across this world that only we are made in your image. No other animal or creature, just you gave us that opportunity. So we come before you in your name, Lord Jesus, and all of God's children said, oh, I love it. I love it. Man. So in his image, in his image, that's our topic today, in his image. So what does that mean? What exactly does that mean? So let's begin with Genesis, a Genesis, so to speak. And God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on this earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female. So you see already, we're already separated from the animals. We're already separated from all the creatures. God made us in our image. And as you can tell, we have dominion over them. So let's go to another scripture in Colossians. He is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. So as you can tell, you know, Jesus came on this earth. We kind of look like him, so I guess we're in his, God's image. So what does that mean physically? Is it, is it in his image physical? So let me, let me come up with a few pictures of some examples here. First one, of oh, hair. Yes, hair. God's the only perfect one. But you notice each hair is near perfect. Each hair is almost in the perfect place that God created for him. Almost. But I think it's more than that. It's more than just near perfection. See, God did an amazing, beautiful thing in creation. So, let's go to another picture. Ah, there's our beauty, right? Each one has a different hairstyle. Each one has short hair, long hair, ponytails. I mean, it's just amazing that God can use a diversity in a way of bringing up His beauty in so many different ways. So, What's a way for us to come closer to God? I mean, a lot of you have known about fasting, so let's go to an example of fasting. Ah, no hair, <laughs> little hair. Yeah, so I'm hoping that that brings us a little closer to God, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. So, in his image, maybe it doesn't pertain to us physically. I believe it's, I believe it's spiritually. So, Let's look at a phrase here. God gave us the capacity to be filled with his attributes and character, with the opportunity to share these gifts with others. So think about that. God gave us the capacity to be filled with him, with his attributes. I mean, we're not going to be perfect God, but we are filled with his attributes. We are filled with his character. And the nice thing about this is that you are called out to share these gifts with others. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. 
is attributes and characters. They can be attained by anybody. They can be attained by everyone. So what does this scripture say about some of his attributes and character? What does it say about some of the gifts that you can have? So let's go to the screen again to 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. You see, there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but it's the same Lord. Okay? And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God that works in all, in all. So just remember that it, it, it just, each of us are unique, but each of us has an innate gift or skill just to us. But yet we're all equal in God. So I'd like to give you a, a few more examples of God's attributes and gifts that separate us from any other creation, from any other animal, creepy, crawly creature, and all of that. So I want to give you some more examples, okay? We have the power. We have the power to create, to be creative, okay? I want you to think about that. No other created thing is like us. So you look at the birds. The birds can fly, but have they built an airplane? Have they ever built a jet? No. The beavers can build little dams in the rivers and streams, but have they built the Hoover Dam? No. God gave us that power. So what about the fish? The fish swim all over, the salmon up to Columbia, but we can build boats that can go around the world and then my old buddies, the apes. Yeah. Evolutionists think that, they're, that we're from them. <laughs> Let me tell you something different. Apes can love, and they can reason some. But is there an ape that's a neurosurgeon? Is there an ape that's a scientist? Right? Have they, you know, what about biology? And we can do so many things in the medical industry now, in that field. Apes, I'm sorry, they just can't do that. <laughs> so, God created us in his image. Why? I believe it's to give us a purpose. I believe he's giving us a task to accomplish, a desire. So, what does that mean here for you? What does that mean for you here at BBC? Well, I want to point out our mission statement. Okay? We are here because we are here to glorify God. We are here to praise Him. We pray to Him. We worship Him. See, God is just amazing. How can we not glorify Him? And that's just one of the reasons why you are here in particular at BBC. There are professors here that want to equip you the staff, everyone is here to help you, to equip you. Why? So you can go into the schools and teach them about God. You can go in different places and preach the word. It doesn't have to be in four walls. Okay? You can preach anywhere. You can preach in downtown Boise. You can preach with your family. You know, you can preach across the African plains. You can be missionaries. You can be in the Amazon rain, okay? This is a purpose for each and every one of you, but you're coming here to be equipped to do that, okay? So what's another purpose? Well, we're going to build up his church. And again, like I said, we're not contained by four walls, okay? We can build up his church in groups. We can build up his church when we're on a mission, when we go somewhere on a mission, Okay? So some of the things that uh, I want to bring up, I want to bring up relationships. Okay? Relationships. God created us to have a relationship with him first and foremost. Okay? We have this ability to not only have a relationship with him, but we can build relationships with each other. We can build up friendships 
with each other. Each of us can have friends in so many different ways in a relationship. I've got friends from Australia, Thailand, India, Pakistan, Haiti, Virginia, Florida. We can all have friendships because God wanted a relationship with us. I want to bring up the uh, most important attribute. And Logan talked about this a little bit last week. And that's his love. God's love for us. And forgiveness for us. You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That through him that we can come to him and have eternal life. No other creature, no other created thing or being can do that. For God loved us, and we were created in his image to know that, to feel that. So I'd already went over our mission statement, a little out of sequence. Thanks, guys. But I want to show you one more image. I want to show you one more image. This guy I saw on TV, flipping through the old Christian channels. Yeah, I watch them. I do. And I, I ran across this guy in a church, and he, uh, he, he just amazed me. And I was really blessed to see him live here in Boise, not once, but twice. This guy is from Australia. The gentleman's name is uh, Nick Vujicic. Try and say that four times real fast, huh? Nick Vujicic. So I want to point you to the, the screen, and we can watch a video of Nick. I was born in Melbourne, Australia, 1982, and my parents had no idea that I was going to be born without arms or legs. I was the only one that I ever saw without limbs. My faith in Jesus Christ was sealed after seven years of wondering why, God, I was born this way. Uh, he answered me very clearly through John chapter 9. And I gave my life to Jesus at 15 after reading about how he came across a man who was born blind. And I'm like, hey, hold on a second. This looks interesting. <laughs> and no one knew why he was born that way. I'm like, perfect. So I read on and in verse 3 of the ninth chapter, Jesus said it was done so that the works of God would be revealed through him. And I'm like, wow, God, if you had a plan for the blind man, you do have a plan for me. And that was the beginning of my personal relationship with Jesus. Youth groups were starting to call me. Churches were starting to call me. Opportunities were opening up everywhere for me to share my testimony. I was speaking in front of 300 sophomore public high school students. Three minutes into it, half the girls were crying. One girl in the middle of the room started weeping. She put up her hand and she said, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but can I come up there and give you a hug? In front of everyone, she came and she hugged me. She cried on my shoulder and whispered in my ear, no one's ever told me that they love me. No one's ever told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am. I couldn't believe it, it changed my life. That was when I knew. I was called to be a worldwide evangelist. Today, do not leave here unchanged. Leave here unchanged. You don't know what God can do with your broken pieces until you give God your broken pieces. And I want you to know when you fall down, God's grace is sufficient. God's hand will come down and pick you up. By the grace of God, we have seen face to face a half a million souls say yes to Jesus and be plugged into a local church. As crazy as it sounds, our goal at Life Without Limbs Ministry is to preach to every single soul on the planet, seven billion people. We believe that this goal is possible as the Holy Spirit is gathering an army and building up supporters to send us and accomplish this mission. <clears throat> Pretty amazing guy, isn't he? Pretty amazing. 
You see, Nick is even in the image of God because God is in here. Even though he has physical disabilities, he's reached out to millions, millions of people because he has God's power in here. He was called out to do this. A lot of people didn't think he could do it, but he did, millions of people. See, God will give us an amazing power. He will give us amazing confidence if we put our faith in him. He will give us hope. And because we're in his image, all things are possible. All things are possible. See, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter if you're short or tall. It doesn't matter about the color of your skin. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't even matter about your academic prowess. It doesn't matter because God called each of us. We are not limited by anything. So our Lord did not give us a, spa, a power of timidity. He gave us the power of the Holy Spirit. He gave us a power to reach out to others. You see, he even gave a 61-year-old balding pudgy chef with a short-term memory the confidence to come and speak to you today future Christian leaders that through his power is going to change this world and transform it to him. Let's go before our Lord in prayer again. Oh, Father in heaven, we just thank you. Just thank you so much. that We have the ability to feel your presence. We thank you, Lord, that your presence is felt here today. We thank you, Lord, that through you we have the faith to have hope in you, that all things are possible through you. Lord, we thank you for your power that you can instill within us. We thank you, Lord, that we can go out and reach others and bring them to you, Lord. It doesn't matter our preaching ability. It doesn't matter how smart we are. We are given your power to reach out and bring each and every one to you. And Lord, we come before you humbly in your name. And all that God's children said, loudly, amen. I thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.